Hey everybody, welcome back to another Behind the Product with a Quick Draw Transmission Controller. We got a comment months and months ago, probably about a year ago, about somebody wanting us to do a trans controller, and we figured, why not do it? So we made one. It does the 4L60 to 4L80. It has the VSS and the turbine input speed and does all that stuff. Doesn't do four-wheel drive stuff, but we're we're looking into it. It can do standalone, it can do CAN communication with our systems because of our proprietary CAN network we use. But it's a fantastic option, and we put pretty good shift scheduling in there based off of math and actual real live data that we've collected through some of our testing. So comes with a handheld whenever you're doing standalone, and without uh, without without like the introduction of like a kill shot system, you really do need that. When you use like a kill shot or a, a Joker or Wild Card or any of our other Asus systems, you don't need the handheld because you can switch in between system to system in the handheld does a fantastic job. It has a bunch of different options, which we'll talk about the wiring harness and some of the connections and different applications it has, but it, you know, it's got a stock driving mode and it has a performance mode as well. Um, fantastic unit. I'm really happy that we actually have it. It's out live and we let the people actually name the thing. We took a big old poll and figured out what was going to call it because we had a bunch of really goofy names, but we're company of the people. We're here for the people, so we figured we'd let the people name some of our stuff. And it's good fun, because, I mean, why not? This is hot rods, right? So, anyways, we'll, uh, we'll get into what's in the box, what the wires do, and some of the different applications. So, let's get into that. So, fresh out of the box, let's see what we got here. We got the ECU itself. This is in cast aluminum, does a wonderful thing. It even it's got, it's got a part number to back, too. That's in hexadecimal. If you're real smart, you want to diagnose that, what that means. So... Got four lights on the front, it's the normal stuff. We got an A and a B relay, it's communication lights, so on and so forth. It just kind of sets state. Um, these things are really great. We, in our systems, because of the type of case we use in our, our equipment, um, we don't have any of that EMI RFI stuff. It really filters a lot of it out. And that's, you know, that means you can have a lot more freedom of where to mount these things. Preferably, when you mount these, you want to mount them down. You want these, uh, you want these connections to be down. That way water doesn't pull up on top of it prematurely corrode the connector, make a bunch of issues, so on and so forth. There's only one vent port in the back of it. This kind of gets a bit of a diaphragm on the inside of it, but it's it's uh, for, actually in this system it doesn't do anything because it's another case we use for a barometric pressure sensor, but it's still there, so you gotta be wary of that. But yeah, mounting of it, you wanna do it just like that. And we flipped the label appropriately, so it's in the correct orientation for people doing that. Also in the kit, if you're doing a standalone, you got yourself a five inch handheld. It does have GPS, so when you do the setup, you'll have to tell it whether, you know, you know, where you're getting your speed signal from, whether it's VSS or what have you not. But it's it's very self-explanatory when you go through the setup of the wizard. But yeah, five inch handheld, this is a GPS handheld. It works with any of our systems. You just gotta select which one you're working with. Um, not not too bad there. These are actually a lot a lot better than some of our competitors handhelds because of the the field of view and the construction of it as well and they're a whole lot harder to break than they used to be because i've let the magic smoke out of almost literally everything aces has that's why they're so tough nowadays so let's get to the first bit of wiring harness one of the most important ones right here this is the actual trans control sub harness you know, it's uh, got a bigger connector. We do have a more modern connector we're using with the jackpot system. Um, this is a very tough connector. It's good for heat, doesn't melt very easy, can deal with some temperature and some weather. It's you got your turbine input speed sensor. This is for your 4L80 applications. In our system, we don't use the turbine input speed like you'd see in the 4L80s and some of the 4L70s for any kind of calibration reasons. It's really there to just modern the turbine input for future applications if we just start to start doing like slip calculations and whatnot inside the transmission itself. We got a normal round GM style plug here. It actually has a name. I can't quite recall what the name of this plug is, but it does plug right into the side of the transmission. Horizontally on a 4L80, vertically on a 4L60. We got the VSS connector, vehicle speed. It's a standard issue GM style connector. Nothing too wild here. I mean, it plugs in. Some of the older 4L60s and 80s will have a different style vehicle speed sensor. They actually make adapters out there on the internet that will go from this style to the older previous style. The only thing you have to worry about when you're doing, say you're gonna do a 4L60 swap in your, in your car, is this is more of a 13 pin situation some of them in about 2007 
um, some of the 4L70s was actually, um, they had a turbine input speed sensor wire on this called pin F. So that would take the place of this, which makes the logic different inside of it. So a lot of aftermarket trans controllers, including ours, doesn't play nice with certain year models of the 4L65 and 70 transmissions. But outside of that, from 1996 to 2003, it's a really safe bet on a 60. 4L80 is pretty much the full range. Um, nothing too crazy there. It's you know, it's nice to uh, be able to offer that kind of range. We don't do Fords and Mopar stuff yet, but we're kind of looking into it. It'll just be a sub-harness change, nothing too crazy. Also in the box, we got ourselves some isolation mounts. These things, you want to match your ECU just like anything else. You want it to be more vibration-free and off surfaces. Uh, this, is our, uh, this is our bag of bags that comes in the box. So. It has all the mounting hardware, tiny nuts, uh, lock washers. Well, not even really lock washers. They're like those weird star washers. But it does have nylon uh, fasteners on them as well. So that's super good for not, you know, for the rubber feet not falling off of it. Those are super nice. Actually, uh, I use a lot of the extra ones on various projects. So, anywho, let's get into the harness. Main harness, right here. Let's see what we got. Somebody tied me in a knot. I blame the media guys. All right, so this wiring harness right here, uh, this is the main harness. It's uh, it looks a little different, but very familiar. We use the, you know the same wiring, the same connectors for a lot of our other stuff. This is actually a, a little bit a little bit meatier with how many wires are actually in and out this thing. But we got the uh, for standalone applications, we got the TPS wire. This is going to be one where you put an inline TPS, you hook it to your carburetor or what have you not, because if you're using it with our system, it's going to be through the CAN bus, which is going to be this right here. We have a CAN high-speed network. It's proprietary coding, so we get a lot of that question. That's why I say that. Uh, but with the TPS, hooks to, I mean, we've had people use factory throttle body setups in these trans controllers for controlling their 60 or their 80, and they've hooked it into the throttle body. I wouldn't suggest splitting the signal without some kind of a filter. It creates havoc. So, got a TPS wire. This is actually sufficiently long as you can see it just goes all the way off camera so we'll get that over there and then let's get the next little bit of it right here we got ourselves the actual one of the speed breakout sensors right here this is just an extra speed sensor for you know if you're if you're doing some kind of weird combination right there it, it, it does tie in if you look at the schematics so it's it's kind of a if you have a, a different generation connector or what have you not you can use this and do an extension as well it's it's quite nice then we get um, as previously mentioned the can connector this hooks up to our five inch or to our can splitter that goes to our other aces systems um, quite fond of actually having a decent can network this little connect, this uh, little retainer tab right here does take a bit of a firm fingernail push right here, but they do come apart, so try not to pry on it with a screwdriver. They're hard to replace. We got one big old main relay. This protects everything, so this is, uh, you know, gets us power from here, this, uh, this bundle of wires. So we got this, your standard issue positive and negative to straight to the battery of transient voltage reasons you don't want to wipe out the ecu with hooking it to a starter or an alternator because 12 volts just isn't always 12 volts we got a nation switch wire clean switch source if you don't have a clean switch source but you have a switch source put it on a relay it cleans it up you know there's not going to be anything weird happen to it right there you're not going to like turn the key on and get it to connect time out because of you know transient voltages or anything weird like that like you're you got it hooked to the field wire of your alternator and it smokes the thing so do try to keep that somewhere clean just like all of our connections i've got a system that was prototype number two and it's still running and dropping it's actually in oregon right now we got a big fuse holder <sighs> these things right here they come with a 30 nothing crazy i think this is an atc style fuse i believe it's called but they plug right in and they got a nice mounting hole super super nice if you want to keep it clean we try to keep our wiring harness laid out and clean as possible that way it makes sense when you're trying to put your build together underneath the hood mounting everything appropriately we got our massive i guess pic connector this is this runs right off to the ecu plugs right in just a nice ah, satisfying click fairly weather resistant it's not waterproof but it is 
water resistant. So if it was mounted upside down, you could pull some water up in here and it would start corroding and doing a bunch of wild stuff as I found out in testing, but it takes a lot. We got some nice little environmental seal right here. These connectors are really cool. So if you, you know, if you have one of these and you incidentally damaged it and you're way out of warranty, if you're like, oh no, this, this blue wire right here on this pin is smoked, you can literally push this, unlock it, pull that out. If I got it unlocked all the way. Oh my God. There it is. There it is. No, I was pulling it funny. So you want to pull on them straight out. I was pulling it at a slight angle and I was catching. So that's just how good of a tight fit it is. Right here, if you wanted to pull a pin out, replace a wire, whatever, these you can actually buy all this stuff off the internet. So we keep it available. Just make sure it's seated, push the lock back in, and then you can plug it right back into your ECU. That's just after warranty, you know, wire and repair stuff. All of our systems that use this style connectors, I mean, it's you don't need special tools to take a pin out. You need special tools for crimping, but that's about it. Let's see what we got here. We got down to the additional wires. So this additional wires right here, if you're following along the schematic, you know, there is measurements for where all these branch off at. So if you're trying to lay out something under your hood, but you're not trying to run your wiring yet, you at least have an idea of how far away things are. And that's, that's any of our systems actually has that in the book at the very, very back. So our additional wire connector, nothing crazy. It's a 10 pin. I'll go ahead and get this out the way and get this in the frame here. Additional wires. So this is going to be wonderfully wrapped up. It's got a bread tie on it. So we're just going to kind of work around that. I don't want to get it too out of sorts. I want to do want to put it back in the box. <laughs> so here in this, you can see right in here, we've, we've already built in the can splitter into the main harness. So when it comes into the can in and out, whenever it's doing its job, whether, you know, whether you plug it into the handheld or what have you not, it's, it's already kind of built in. So you can plug it into another system, the handheld, various things. So as you can see, there's all three can connectors. We got the, the I's and the O's. So I like that a lot, big fan. Here's, here is the VSS connector right here. This is one of those additional ones. We just we got a lot of combination going on with you know how these things hook up and what they hook to. This is an extremely wonderfully long version of this. Quite a big fan. So here's the other end of it. So you see right here, this thing is going to be the other end of this. This is like a part of the extension thing I was just talking about. So there's a couple different methods of. If you're just going to plug it into the one sensor wire for an extension or if you're going to use the one off the, the actual transmission harness itself, like I said, a lot of combinations. Then we got this loose lead harness right here. This is, this is where all the confusion generally happens with these things, other than all these tiny sub harnesses. So we got this guy right here that plugs in and then we got just a few little leads. And we added in some stuff that's not in other versions of our trans controller with our other systems. So, so here we are. We got ourselves the loose leads. I took a minute and combed them all out. That way they wasn't a massive knot. So we can go through them one at a time and see what they are. Here on this first one is a TCC unlock. This is something that you're going to run into. That's going to be like, uh, you know, if you're, it's, you can force it to unlock actually instead of using like the brake which the brake switch itself is the one that like you're just cruising down the road and you hit the brake pedal and it unlocks the torque converter so you can coast down to whatever idle speed or different gear what have you not our tcc lock button right here this will force it into no matter what vehicle speed anything second gear and fourth gear it's going to force it to lock the converter up for you so some people in certain drag racing applications want that not really a thing I use very often. I drive a lot of street stock cars and all that whatnot. So then we got the speedo output. This is just a square 12 volt output from our system. It picks up our VSS or what have you not and sends it out to if you're going to use it to a speedometer for instance or some other subsystem in your vehicle that needs the speed input. This is a good source for that especially since how we already have the VSS and everything hooked up. So we get on with it here. 
we're gonna go with the calibration select. So there's an A and a B calibration in this, and like the A calibration is gonna be street driving. Cruising down the road, 4L60, just chilling in your G body with an LS swap, going down the road. And then you get to the drag strip, and you activate the selection. That's gonna be the sport mode. So that's gonna be hard shifts, higher line pressure, all the stuff you want when you're trying to uh, bang the gears out of your transmission as it goes, or ruin your new torque converter. But, you know, it's just one of those things that that's just drag racing stuff, right? So, caliber select like mode A or B. The, um, let's see what we got here, the next one, mode select. Similar to calibration select, mode select is whether you're using it for the bump shift. So if you got the mode select, activated then that's going to allow you from going into just strictly an automatic mode to be able to hook up those aftermarket paddle shifters if you wanted to or a push button actuation going on so you can actually force it up and down in through the gears digitally with using this wire in a combination of let me find the other ones and they, they are relevant to this here's the bump up wire literally hit the button it goes up a gear and there should be a bump down in here as well so right here's the bump down hit a button down a gear if you're using this particular mode select let's see let's get into oh, what back to the TCC unlock right here so that's that's going to be a force it to unlock no matter what situation situation uh, then we got this right here is our optional output that we're going to make it's a groundable output but it's we're going to make it into a programmable output for custom stuff later if you want a, a relay activated or some weird thing happening it's at least one output that will we'll add into the system later it's in here so it's more cost effective for you the end user and us as a company to go ahead and leave this in here knowing that it doesn't do anything right now but we do got big plans for it tack in that's where you get your rpm signal from if it's going through CAN bus, it's going to be handled through the network. If you're running it standalone, you're just going to be hooking it up to whatever tack wi uh, tack wire you're using off your uh, ignition box or your distributor or what have you not. So too easy there. Back to the brake wire. So hit the brake pedal, unlocks torque converter, continue uh, decelerating or coasting. That's uh, that's that's a whole wiring thing. That's a whole system. I don't believe I've missed anything on this. Um, we got extension wires. We got initial wires, can can splitters, and all that whatnot. So yeah, I think we're good. With the Quick Draw Transmission Controller, thanks for making the suggestion. I I love seeing things on the internet, good suggestions on the internet, and we're I mean, we're doing it for the people. We're doing it for you. We wouldn't have made this without the suggestion. So if you're interested in a Quick Draw Transmission if, uh, Controller, if you got a 4L60 or 4L80, uh, just get on our website, acesefi.com. Shoot customer service an email. Shoot tech if you got tech questions an email. We don't mind at all. So we're gonna keep sitting here doing it for the people. Keep giving us ideas and suggestions, and, you know, we'll, we'll see where it all goes in the future. Thank you.